what would be your advice to like med students that maybe they think they're thinking about doing anesthesia? They're like in their third mm-hmm. year, like what, how should they like go approach their rotations or their elective time? Like what, and then like even just their thought process of like kind of making that decision. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I, I'm actually, I think I'm better able to ask, answer this question because I got this question even last year and mm-hmm. then the year before. Um, when you're doing your anesthesia rotation, first off, I want to make a more broad statement because I think a lot of people are turned off by anesthesia because quite frankly, as a medical student, it is such a boring rotation. Um, <laughs> and I love, I love teaching and I love, you know, letting medical students try a lot. That's just kind of my own, my personal commitment to education. But as a resident, having a, as having a, having a medical student beside you uh, in an OR case is very hard because the thing about anesthesiology, why it looks easy from the outside, but why it's tough and exhausting actually. And why we have like, the, our field actually has the highest suicide rate and has the highest burnout uh-huh. rate, which is surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is because most cases can go smoothly. Some of them are stressful, but I would say on a day, day in and day out, if you want to do a really good job, you have to be hyper vigilant. Mm-hmm. Um, that means for like, you're, it's almost comparable like to taking a step one exam or step two exam, um, especially if you're sitting for those seven, eight hour surgeries, which is why we actually have those like dedicated breaks. Um, because in between cases, we don't get breaks because we're always turning over the room, we're responsible for setting up, we're responsible for catching the things that the primary team sometimes don't catch. Like they have a hemoglobin that's eight, and we should mm-hmm. be transfusing them because we anticipate they'll have this blood loss in the surgery. Sure. Or a lab value, like a potassium of seven, where you know there's some medications we can induce with that can worsen that and put the patient in a cardiac arrest. Um, and so we just have to be hyper vigilant when we're on. And I think... By design, that's also why we only work on till three because it's very hard to do that. Because when I do the calls, I know how exhausting it is. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then if you add a medical student on top of that and you're trying to teach, it's like on a whole different level. And although you want to have, everyone thinks that, you know, what's so difficult about placing a tube? What's so difficult about this? That's because like nine times out of 10, you're right, it's safe. But then that 10%, it can actually kill the patient. Um, like, yeah, and that's, yeah. I, I fortunately, you know, knock on wood, haven't had that happen, but not to be able to secure someone's airway, just keep jabbing and trying to put a tube in is like one of the most dangerous things. And my attendees keep telling me this too. Like everybody always says, like you build this confidence and anesthesia. I'm getting pretty good at my intubation. I'm getting pretty good at putting in line, but then I'll still have that one day where there's this airway I can't get. And it's going it, to, it will unfortunately the patient to have a hypoxic arrest and, and I can, I've gotten close calls where I can appreciate that. And so all of that being said, going back to the medical student, like the medical student comes in, anesthesia rotation, they, know, they heard it's chill. There's like the action at the start of the case. Like, can I try the intubation? Yeah, sure. Great. But then after that, their parts kind of done. And it's like, it looks like a lot of charting us kind of looking at the monitors. So that I, I want to tell them there's still a lot going on because we're looking at things and these are things I'm, I'm still getting better at learning. But for the medical student who's not, who doesn't have that level of responsibility to the patient also don't do the same level of prep for these cases. Mm-hmm. It's just like hard for them to appreciate and they're not involved. And so that's my general statement, like disclaimer I want to tell all medical students who do anesthesia and get turned off by that. As a resident, it's so different. As an attending, it's even more scary because you have to do this on a higher scale and mm-hmm. run multiple rooms. Um, so that being said, now for the people who are interested in anesthesia, what I would encourage them to do is have the experience I did as a resident. So if you have the flexibility that you do in medical school, everyone's going to say, I know I'm busy in this, but you'll never be as busy as we were as interns, like <laughs> everyone else was as interns. You have time. You have time. Seek out the non-traditional anesthesia experiences. I'm talking about the ICU. I'm talking about if your program has a chronic pain or acute pain, search those out because there are people who finish residency or young attendings or even, you know, uh, seasoned attendings that don't know what acute pain doctors do, that don't know what chronic pain doctors do. 
everyone kind of ha- have, has a conception, but because these fields are very niche, they, they just don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think being able to see those is also great. Um, and it's something you would honestly never see unless you did that rotation. And so uh, that's what I would also encourage uh, medical students who are in- interested in anesthesia do bolster your interest by seeing what's on the other side and what opportunities await. That's so nice. No, I think that's great advice, you know, seeking out, you know, as much exposure as possible. And, and I think getting exposure to not just putting people to sleep, like you said, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, nice, nice. So I guess given that do anesthesia applicants, I realize this is different now with the whole COVID situation, but like before, like when you were applying, did people typically do away rotations? Is that something people usually did in anesthesia or was it kind of, some people did, but most people didn't kind of, how was that played out, uh, when you were applying? So people did, um, people did, I think it was generally thought as being very favorable, but as with like all away rotations, there's like risks associated with it, especially if you don't leave a good impression. Um, personally, I did not do any aways. Um, and I know that there are people that were concerned because I've mentioned a lot of people um, through Meta Twitter who were concerned during COVID that they were not able to do aways. And I reassured everybody that I did, I did zero. And here I am still matched. Mm-hmm. I matched at my number one program at that. Um, Excuse me. Um, so I don't think it it's necessary, but it could be great if you're very serious about a specific program, which I just thought was hard to know without ever seeing it beforehand sure. to make that sort of commitment. But maybe you do. You already knew of a program, and you had like close friends there, and you're like, I must match there. Then, but certainly, like you know, work your hardest and leave a good impression. Then that's great. But if not, it's totally fine too. Um, again, it's just a interesting field like these away rotations will serve different purposes i think for anesthesia a lot of it is assessing how good of a fit you are and if you're not confident that you can you know gel with most of the residents you work with and kind of display a a, a hard work ethic it's most likely not going to benefit you you're not certainly not going to ever impress anybody by like doing intubations that's just not that's that's not something i mean it's cool and you should you know applaud yourself but uh, that's not the stuff that we, we, I mean, cause I, I'm involved in these residency recruitment stuff too. Now that we talk about, it's really more like, were they a great team player? Were they, uh, do they know when they should step in and, you know, also kind of, uh, step out where you engage these kind of things. Uh, so you are being observed and, um, it's, it's not necessary to do so. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now I realize we could probably do kind of wrapping things up here, we could probably do a whole episode on this, but like kind of just what are your, your general tips you give people applying to like, they've made that commitment. They're applying anesthesia residency, like kind of present them the best way possible, present themselves the best way possible. For interviews and stuff. Yeah. Like interviews, application, uh, anything you can think of that are kind of like the, like big, like hallmark tips. Maybe you would give somebody. Yeah. Anesthesia. It's going to sound cliche, but communication is essential. Um, and I think if you're able to convey that well during interview day, it's going to serve you well. And then the other thing that's essential that, you know, you get endorsement of from uh, about this in your MISB or MISB equivalent letter from your medical school, your rotation reviews, uh, and then the interview day as well is like your well, your willingness or your commitment to be a good team member. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not always the case and leadership, all that stuff is great too. But the reality is, is when you're thinking about most of intra-op OR, I'm not saying that anesthesiologists aren't leaders. There are times we have to step up, but first and foremost, before being considered a leader, anyone, you, this goes for the surgeon as well you have to be willing to be a good team player. You have to like learn to put your ego aside and, and where you're there for, you know, your, uh, your intraoperative team when they needed you. And then even outside of the OR among medical student colleagues or resident colleagues, we're a good team member. Like those are the things that I think will serve you really well. Um, if you can have those things said about you applying to, applying to anesthesia. Mm-hmm. 